Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy. Today is January 13th, 2024. It is about 5 p.m. in the evening, and I pray each of you have had an amazingly beautiful and blessed day thus far. I certainly have. It's been a day of rest, and I just thank the Lord for it. Um, I wanted to take some time out today to make a video um, that I pray will encourage the church Saints, it is a new year, but the enemy's strategies are not new. Okay, every time around this time of year, um, the wolves <laughs> in sheep's clothing and their quote unquote ministries begin their yearly circus act. Okay, so it typically starts with some type of corporate Daniel fast for 21 days where the majority of people are encouraged to seek the hand of God instead of his face. And then comes the invitations for their big conferences being held toward the middle of the year in some huge arena that requires people to spend hundreds to attend, right? Find flights, hotel stays, all of that stuff. And that's really what I'm zoning in on throughout this video. I want to talk about these church conferences, right? There is a saying, a fool and his money are soon parted. And I really need for those of you who are subscribed to this channel to really hear my heart and hear what I am saying in this video. Yesterday, as I was scrolling through YouTube, a video popped up with a popular preacher from Houston. I do not follow his ministry at all. So I wasn't sure why the video came up, but it did. The title of it was promoting his church's annual conference. So for kicks, I just clicked on the video. I listened to his promotional video, and then I read some of the comments underneath his video. And I have to be honest with you, some of the comments genuinely hurt my heart. And I felt like I needed to take my time and make this video to share with each of you what I know for sure. That spirit of religion has a lot of people in the body of Christ in a chokehold, in absolute bondage, okay? That's the spirit that drives countless people to spend what they cannot afford in order to go to these conferences. Because what's being sold is the idea that this conference will offer some type of miraculous breakthrough or blessing from the Lord, right? People are being made to feel like they have to pay this money in order to be in the building because blessings are falling. And if they miss the conference, then they'll miss out on a move of God. It's almost as though the midnight hour in the secret place and communing with the Lord one-on-one -on -one isn't powerful enough. No, no, no. You have to go to the conference in order to encounter the Lord. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that this couldn't be any further from the truth. The vast majority of these conferences are nothing more than money grabs. That's what they are. The first comment I saw underneath the video was from someone who was basically asking the Lord to make a way for her to get to the conference. But it was the wording that she used that broke my heart. She typed, and I took a screenshot of it so that you could see it. Father God, you know how desperately myself and others on this video really need to be in the building for this particular conference. I crossed out the name of the conference because it's not about this particular pastor or the name of his conference. I don't want you guys to miss the message. I'm not gunning for just him. I'm talking about all of them. And so I'm just using his video and his particular conference as an example. But I am talking about these church conferences all over every last one of them. Okay. I felt like when I read her comment, I thought to myself, you're praying for God to make a way for you to attend this conference that you cannot afford. And by your own words, you are desperate to go and you need to be in the building. Church, what we need to do is get comfortable in the secret place. What we need to do is get comfortable laying prostrate on the floor in the privacy of our own homes. What we need to do is get comfortable crying out to the Father, praying in our heavenly language and fasting. 
And I rebuke whatever spirit of religion would ever lead you to believe that being in a building at a conference could ever yield a more powerful encounter with the Lord than being alone with him in the secret place. Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior, but the enemy always wants to make us feel like we can't encounter the Lord unless we're in some type of church building or we're at some type of church conference. It's not true. It's simply not true. And I praise and thank God for the way he saved me. I thank him that he would not allow me to fall prey to the spirit of religion in this way. Because unless you are new to this channel, you are familiar with my testimony when I tell you that I grew up in church. We went to church constantly, but I did not get saved until I was 35 years old. It is very possible to go to a church building every Sunday and not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and not be saved and not know Christ and not have personal relationship with him. And that's the vast majority of people sitting up in these conferences. Now, another woman in the com comment section stated that she was at the conference last year and that it was quote unquote amazing. So in the comment section, I typed underneath her comment. I just asked her, how so? How so? And I'm still waiting to hear back. And the reason why I asked her how so is because I genuinely wanted to know what she considers amazing and what qualified it as amazing to her. Was it the tickling ear sermon? You know what I mean? Was it the motivational speeches that got her geared up? Was it the emotionalism, the crying, the shouting, the quote unquote catching of the Holy Spirit and all the theatrics that often take place at these types of conferences? Was it the music? You know, because it's not a good conference unless the most popular gospel artists roll up, right? What made it amazing? I was interested to know. And that's the question I'm asking you, church. What makes you feel driven to take your money and run to these conferences every year? Are you experiencing breakthrough? Are you walking in the promises of God? Are you prospering as your soul prospers? Or is your wallet just a few hundred dollars lighter so that you could go have a feel good time? And line the pockets of these pastors and preachers who, trust me, don't need your money. Because these days, ministry is big business. You hear what I say? A lot of them got more money than you can imagine. And so somebody may be listening and feeling like, well, Dorothy, it's my money. Why are you concerned with how I spend my money? Well, let me share this with you. The truth is, I'm not. But I do believe that God is. Because sowing and reaping is a biblical concept. Church, you have got to understand that money is a seed. And some of you are all geared up to spend yet another year sowing into ministries, conferences, and projects of people who, unbeknownst to you, actually work for the kingdom of darkness. The seeds you unknowingly sow into the kingdom of darkness will grow. And anything affiliated with the kingdom of darkness is cursed. God cannot and will not bless the enemy's handiwork. So when your finances are out of order and you find yourself robbing from Peter to pay Paul... It's important for you to think long and hard about where you've sown financial seeds. What conferences have you paid money to attend when the gospel is free? What prophetic coaching classes have you paid for when the prophetic is a free spiritual gift and was never meant to be monetized? What blind obligatory tithing do you do to your local church unaware of where any of that money goes or what it is actually being used for? You are sowing ladies and gentlemen. And the question is, is what kingdom are you sowing into? Okay. I sat and I listened to this pastor's promotional video. And here were some of the key words that I heard. I heard friends, dynamic conference experience, collective movement, personal breakthroughs, empowerment, renewed sense of purpose, and incredible distinguishing guests. These are all very strategic marketing words used to entice and ensnare the spiritually immature who are always looking for some type of quote unquote dynamic experience, some type of show, some type of entertainment. But even now, I am reminded of scripture from 1 Kings 19, 11 through 12 that reads, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. 
and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Far too many of the spiritually immature are constantly looking for signs, wonders, and entertainment. These loud, rock star concert-like events filled with lights, camera, and action that we are calling church conferences, right? The word of God says God was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake or the fire, rather a still small voice. That still small voice can absolutely not be heard in the midst of these loud, prideful, flesh-filled conferences that so many people in the body of Christ run to go to every year. In that two minute and 28 second promotional video, there was no mention of repentance, there was no mention of salvation, and there was no mention of Jesus. Jesus' name was not mentioned one time, and the reason is because most of these conferences are not about Jesus. These are self-promoting money grabs by hirelings who don't care anything about God's sheep. Now, I took a moment to head over to the website of this pastor and his church and this conference just to see what the entrance fees for this conference actually look like. And in typical wolf to sheep marketing strategy, there were tiers, right? So the top tier cost was $499, which is also a marketing strategy, right? That's basically $500, but that price point is designed to push the envelope without actually going there, right? And anyone who has had at least one business course in school knows that there's a psychology behind pricing. There's a way to manipulate numbers to make people think they're paying less when in actuality, we're just talking about a dollar. Okay, so $499 looks much better than $500. For $500, according to this website, you get access to the church conference, a tote bag, a registration badge with their brand on it, a seat in a reserve section, exclusive entrance to the conference, a designated lounge to wait in, a gift bag with their brand on it, and an exclusive event with the pastor and his first lady as though they are some type of worldly celebrity couple that the people of God they were actually supposedly sent to serve should actually have to pay to meet, right? It's very bizarre. It's very interesting. And it just gives worldly. The next tier is $399. The tier underneath that is $299. The tier underneath that is $199. And for those who just want day passes, it's $149. So just to step in the building will cost you $149. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And one of the most interesting things about the promotional video that I just could not overlook was this right here. I took a screenshot so that you can see it. The pastor actually says conference, but I suppose the computer transcribed it as the word coffins. Jesus. And to be honest with you, that is precisely what many of these conferences actually are. They are coffins, a resting place for the spiritually dead. And the irony is that while there, many of them likely feel so alive, so on fire for the Lord, so empowered, all the emotion, all the music, all the things. But what many of them are actually experiencing is a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. And it's actually very sad how deceived many are. And so someone may say, well, Dorothy, what gives you the authority to speak on this? You real opinionated about all this right here. My answer would be experience. 
That's what gives me the authority. You see, the Lord allowed me to go through my very own season of running after every new popular preacher to attend their conferences and waste my time and money. Okay, I felt like I just had to attend these conferences in order to be part of what the Lord was doing next. I felt like if I wasn't there, I would somehow miss out. I didn't bat an eyelash (laughs) to drop hundreds of dollars on entry fees, flights, hotels, food, and all that tithing, right, that happens at these conferences. You can count on that trusty tithing plate coming around about 50 times each night. Now, yesterday I went into my old emails and I found something that made me laugh hysterically. Okay, back in 2012, and this was well before I actually got saved and gave my life to the Lord for real, my best friend and I, the absolute hellions that we were, just couldn't wait to go to Atlanta to go to T.D. Jakes' Woman Thou Art Loose conference. Okay, that particular year, the guest speakers were Cheryl Brady, Paula White, and Cindy Trim. And had I not been such a rookie in the Lord, just that lineup alone would have been enough for me to stay home, but I didn't know any better, okay? And I couldn't wait to head on down to Atlanta to be a part of this conference. The Phillips Arena in Atlanta was completely sold out, okay? When I tell you that building was packed, like a bunch of sardines in a can, it was just wall-to-wall women, all piled up on top of each other, believing there was some type of miracle located in the building, okay? So hopeful and yet so ignorant. But let me tell you what it really was. A bunch of emotionalism, okay? A bunch of empty rhetoric about purpose. A bunch of low-key mammon worship and how God's children should all be financially prosperous. A bunch of women wailing and crying, right? A bunch of empty promises of breakthrough and miracles. Three long days of this. And while we were there, a good emotional time was had. And I can't talk about anyone but myself. But after all that crying, praising, snotting, and wailing, I flew back home to New Jersey in the same spiritual condition that I was when I left. No deliverance, no healing, right back to my demonic oppression, right back to my cursing, right back to my pride, right back to my anger, right back to my fornication, okay? And I'll bet every grain of rice in China, many others did too. Almost 12 years later, here's what I can share with you, brothers and sisters. The breakthrough never comes from, quote unquote, being in the building. Acts 748 says the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands. The breakthrough comes from being in his presence. The breakthrough comes from yielding everything that you are to him in humility. I took the time to share all this with you, church, because as I said in the beginning of the video, the year is new. But the enemy's strategies and tactics to hem up the church is not. He's going to keep using the same tools and the same usual suspects because it is working. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that this is the year when you come to know him for yourself in the secret place so intimately that paying $150 to $500 to be quote unquote in the building at somebody's conference doesn't excite you in the least. Jesus Christ hung on a cross and died for us. And the veil of separation between us and the Father was ripped from top to bottom. Matthew 27, 50 through 51, okay? We have access to the Most High Yahweh all day, every day for free. So I guess my question to us, church, is how do you think Christ feels when we actually believe that we quote unquote desperately need to be in the building when he died so that we could have direct access to the Father in his name. Church, we don't need the building. The Holy Spirit indwells. Isn't that what he told us in John 16, 7? It says, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. How do we have access to the Holy Spirit of the one true living God, but actually believe that we must be, quote unquote, in the building in order to encounter him at some conference?
We got to do better, church. We have to do better. Now, all throughout this video, I did my best to block out the name of this pastor, his church, and the name of his specific conference. And the reason is because this video is not just focusing on his error. I am calling out all of them. What he is doing is textbook across the board, and many of these pastors are guilty of this very same behavior. And I don't want anyone focused on this one man, because this warning may actually also apply to the conferences held by your pastor. Test the spirit by the spirit. Okay, any conference that you got to pay money to get into, check that. Go before the Lord and ask him about that. You shouldn't have to pay to go hear the free gospel. <laughs> you got to make sense of this. I invite each of you to meditate on each of the scriptures that I provided throughout this video. And I also encourage you to think about the message that I've shared. Take it before the Lord. And allow him to further minister to you about the vast majority of these conferences that so many people in the church break their necks to attend, but will not get up in the midnight hour to meet the Lord in the secret place right in their own homes. Like these people are willing to book flights, book hotels, fly cross country in order to go to these comfort, uh, conferences and supposedly encounter God. You got people in his comment section talking about they hope he has a payment plan. So you want to go to a conference that you can't afford, right? I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. You, you, you rob from Peter to pay Paul to make it to these conferences to line the pockets of these pastors, these pimps that are already rich, right? And then you turn around and you ask the Lord to bless your finances. Oh, Father, when is my financial breakthrough coming in? Listen, the math is not mathing, brothers and sisters. This cannot be the year that you are taking your last dime and sowing into foolery. Like I said before, a fool and his money are soon parted. We cannot afford to be foolish with our seeds. Our financial seeds must be sown into the kingdom of God. You have got to be very careful about your willingness to sow any old place this year. The Lord, while he may be found, remember that relationship with Jesus Christ is personal. And if an encounter with him is what you truly seek, I speak from experience when I say that comes from the secret place, not a sold out arena filled with thousands of people, lights, cameras, and action. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have for you on this particular video. And God willing, I will see you next time.